Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special 193 for March 27th, 2014, covering Microsoft's announcement of Office for iPad. Well, welcome to Twit's special coverage of the Microsoft announcement taking place live right now in San Francisco. Uh, this is Satya Nadella's first public appearance as Microsoft CEO. My name is Mike Elgin, and joining me today is Paul Thorat of Supersite for Windows fame, and he's also the co-host of Twit's Windows Weekly Show. Welcome, Paul. Hello. Hey. Uh, and um, glad you're here. So the the event has just begun and it's in progress. So why don't we go ahead and uh, kick over to that video, Jason? We learn uh, the place uh, in some sense, and I think uh, T. S. Eliot uh, captured it best uh, when he said that you should never cease from exploration, and at the end of all exploring, you arrive where you started um, and know the place for the very first time. Uh, and for me, that has been more true. Uh, than ever before, and um, and today marks uh, that beginning uh, of exploration for us. Our customers want to know uh, where we are going, what is our innovation agenda, and our team is really ready for it. Uh, we want to talk about one aspect uh, of our strategy going forward. Uh, it's a very important aspect, and over the course uh, of the next couple of weeks and couple of months, there are the we will come back and many other tablets on our team will come back and on the table there. Other it's a Windows and tablet and an Android we'll tablet. See uh, what the new core for Microsoft is and what our innovation agenda is. And most importantly, what I want to key in on is what we as a company can uniquely do to serve our customers uh, better. And everything that we do going forward is grounded in this worldview, uh, which uh, I describe as uh, the world of ubiquitous computing uh, and ambient intelligence. It's an amazing canvas uh, for innovation, and it's an amazing opportunity for growth for our company. This is from Microsoft. Uh, what we see on screen now the, under the ubiquitous computing itself, is a video aspects, that's like three or four years old from, uh, I think I believe it was called Microsoft Future Vision. Uh, it's posted on YouTube, so if you look for that, you can see it. It's a breathtaking video, but it's pretty old. ...that we know and love today, but by the variety of form factors that will come to be over the coming years. If you think about the coevolution of silicon hardware systems and software will birth many new form factors at a pretty rapid pace, and that'll just make computing ubiquitous. The second thing is that pretty much everything we do is going to be digitized. That means every interaction we as humans have with other humans, every interaction that we have with machines, what we're seeing on screen is, is also from that same vision uh, video that Microsoft put together uh, years ago. They did they did several of these, uh, at least two of them, maybe three. Uh, between 2010 and 2011, 12, something like that. I haven't done one in the last couple of years that I'm aware of. With vast amounts of capability like machine learning in real time, and to really take all that insight you get by reasoning over that data and improve the fidelity of those very interactions, improve uh, what you can do as humans with machines, between machines, and what have you. So that, to me, is the future uh, that we are building towards. And, you know, we describe this, um, and you see it today in the growth of the number of users uh, who are connected to the Internet. Uh, they all have uh, devices, and when I say devices, I mean pretty broadly. It's the phones that you carry, it's the tablets, it's the big screens that you interact with, it's the sensors in the room that you enter, uh, and that is what's going to be everywhere. Um, and then all of these things also have applications. Uh, so that exponential growth across connected users, uh, connected devices and applications is what is leading uh, to this growth of the cloud. Now we describe this, and I talked about this in my first mail to all Microsoft employees as a mobile first, cloud first world. Uh, and like you know, any place that's got uh, predominantly computer scientists, I get back this mail saying, hey, look, how can two things be first? Uh, I mean, do you have a problem with ordinal numbers or something? Or, um, and the reality is, it's one and the same. Uh, it definitely is 
that the cloud that is not uh, connected to devices uh, is just latent potential because how does the cloud interact with the real world? It is through by being able to get to devices. It could be a sensor, it could be uh, a mobile device, it could be a tablet, it could be a big screen in a conference room or a living room. And likewise, uh, a device which is not connected to the cloud just cannot complete the scenarios. Uh, so it, to us, it is one and the same, and it's the magical coming together of the cloud and the mobile. Uh, that's really the topic that we want to talk about today. It's Maybe that they just say that desktop uh, that computing is second. <laughs> right, or third. Right. The Microsoft Cloud for mo mobility or mobile scenarios, there is two very unique things that we bring to the table. And that's pretty much going to drive everything that you will see us talk today and do going forward as well. The first one is that we think about users, both individuals and organizations, spanning across all devices. Uh, so that is one, one aspect that you will see us stress a lot. And second is the coming together of the three key constituents that make all this magic happen. That is end users, developers, and IT professionals. Uh, all three Microsoft used to be developers under Obama. It's always been about bringing <laughs> those three constituents together with platforms and applications. And we now do that in a mobile first, cloud first world. And that's our pursuit, that's our innovation agenda. And that's what you'll hear us uh, talk a lot about. So first thing is about uh, people. At the end of the day, if you look at our daily life, uh, we have a set of activities that we do. Uh, we could be reading, we could be capturing, we could be listening, collaborating, organizing, researching. These are all activities that we do across a variety of devices. We're not bound, in fact, to one device, one place, or one time. And the real goal for us is to step up to provide the applications and services that empower every user across all of these uh, devices and all of these experiences. So that's perhaps the job number one uh, that we do, which is to empower people to be productive, do more across all devices. The second thing is around developers. Developers are looking for their canvas to innovate, their opportunity to innovate, and they want Still to be able to Still extremely high level stuff, just talking about you know, the big, the big picture we want to. You know, obviously, in, in, they want to uh, provide developers uh, so with a canvas. A so, so far, we haven't had a single nugget of actual information. I'm curious if that's a hint about a possible Xamarin announcement, though. Yeah, it could be. Scenarios and business scenarios. They want to be able to tackle the hard problems that exist in supporting multiple platforms. They want to be able to scale their business seamlessly uh, as they have more customers. So these are all the hard challenges for developers that we are stepping up uh, to solve and empower developers to build applications that in turn in allow individuals and organizations to be more. And then the last uh, constituent uh, here is the IT professional. Now, there was a study done uh, by Forbes. It's a survey that was done by Forbes where they uh, went and surveyed all the tough jobs, or more importantly, I guess, the most stressful jobs. And uh, one of the things that made it was uh, so executives and CEOs made that list for sure. Uh, but also all journalists and PR professionals made that list. Uh, but the one constituent that I think they missed was uh, the IT professional. Uh, if you think about what is happening uh, today with the proliferation of devices and trends like bring your own device, uh, as well as bring your own application or SaaS applications into the enterprise, uh, perhaps the toughest challenge uh, for the IT professional is to be both empowering the end user to be able to do what they want to do, and at the same time protecting the corporate asset. And that challenge of being able to take a people-centric approach and yet allowing the IT professional to be a hero when it comes to protecting uh, the, end, uh, the corporate asset is allow, what allow we the want to IT step professional up to, really to protect do. his asset. So it's this. <laughs> I, I, I think what he's doing is setting up the general for the specific. So that's obviously a, a reference to the enterprise mobility suite that they're going to be introducing today. So you've got users using devices, i.e. iPads, developers, i.e. Xamarin. Um, and then uh, IT, i.e., the enterprise uh, mobility suite. 
He mentioned bring your own device and bring your own application. He did not mention bring your own service. They will be providing that, apparently. And then I'll come back and talk about it. But at first, I wanted to have Julia White give you a good demo of everything that we are talking about. Thank Thanks. you, Julia. Yep, absolutely. So in this cloud-first, mobile-first world, Microsoft is absolutely focused on empowering people to get more done wherever they need to and on any device. So now I get a chance to show you what Microsoft's doing to help people do more on the device they choose, helping IT secure and manage those devices, and provide a rich development platform in the cloud to develop apps so we can all do more. Now, to start this, I'm going to go to my iPad. Development platform in the cloud is now, interesting. That's, is that could be something different, a uh, visual studio in the cloud. Applications. Hmm. And you see on my iPad, we already have a number of apps, right? I have my Yammer app, Link, Dynamics, Bing, Skype, OneNote, and one of my favorites, OneDrive. So let me go ahead and open that OneDrive app. And thanks to cloud storage with OneDrive, I have access to all of my content on all my devices, including, of course, my iPad. And I can get access to it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and open this Word document here. And you see, it brings it up in the native viewer. And But unfortunately, this is what happens. Um, my, my doc actually has a table of contents. It's gone. Uh, my, my graphics are on top of my text. And if I scroll down, I see that there's a bunch of text kind of jumbled on the side. I can't even read it at all. If I only had the real office for iPad, I could get more done. Mm. Well, it turns out, as of today, you do. So approximately 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, Office for iPad goes live in the App Store, very specifically Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, live for everyone to download and enjoy. And as you can see, this is Word on the iPad. And as you'd expect, my document looks amazing. There's my table of contents. If I scroll down, you can see there's embedded graphics, even my footnotes. Everything looks perfect. And if I go down, you can see I even have tables and charts right here in my Word document. And as you'd expect with Office, I have my ribbon. So it's very familiar. And I have all those very satisfying features that you expect in Office, of course. Now, this is unmistakably Word but it's also very natural on the iPad. And this is a, a design paradigm we balance to make sure these are great, familiar Office applications, but also wonderful in a touch and iPad experience. And that way we know all of our users can be comfortable using these apps and be confident right away to get more done. Now, it's also uh, very easy for me to interact with my content, of course, and I can just This would have been killer here, if they would have announced this in 2010. See, it's absolutely like killer, but what happened was... Yeah. What happened was they didn't, and then a whole generation of people discovered other alternatives. And now, they, now their job is to try to wrench them away from those alternatives and back to Word. I, I think they're going to get some traction on the business side with this. I mean, sure. I think that's going to be a big deal. I, I agree they have a big problem with individuals um, because, yeah, people have just moved on. I have my keyboard up and I have my themes menu and it's, it's shortened so that it doesn't kind of overlay my keyboard or go behind my keyboard, right? So um, if I close my keyboard, there you see all my options render. It's a little thing, but it's a nice example of the fit and finish and the care we've taken to make this a great office experience. Now I can also interact with these charts as an example. Now these I actually created in Excel and I pulled it into my Word document, but even in Word, I can interact with it. And you see that great office experience of when I touch the chart, I got my chart menu right here. And so you can see that I can even in Word, coming from Excel, I can do different formatting, I can do different styles. So I have again that rich office experience people know and love. And then let me go down and actually show you how easy it is to interact even with like rich photography. So let me uh, touch on that. And you Word have is nice pretty straightforward and makes so a lot of sense and the demo in, looks great and all that. I'm, I'm really, and of course Excel is, is something that Microsoft is still doing very well with. But I'm curious to see if they have a plan that they're going to roll out today to save PowerPoint. Because PowerPoint on the iPad would be fantastic if they get it right. So I, I think again there, obviously in the uh, Apple world, the iPad world, a lot of people use uh, keynote, but again, you know, in businesses, uh, PowerPoint is king, and the ability to uh, get that app on on the iPad is going to be a big deal. I can also be confident that as I move across my PC, my Mac, my phone, the browser, everything looks just as I wanted it because it's the promise of Office. We keep that file fidelity, so everything always looks exactly as I wanted, and I never lose content. Now, 
Creating beautiful content is certainly important, but so is collaborating, right? And so that's why we built Coauth right into these Office apps, just like we have in all of our Office applications. So if I go up and you can see that I actually have five people editing this document right now. Now it's saved in OneDrive, right? So we have one master source of the truth, and we're all editing it right now in real time. And it helps us collaborate so much more efficiently. And also, the other part of OneDrive is because everything's saved to the cloud by default, if I'm making edits on the go, everything's saved. I never have to worry about losing anything as I'm making my edits. <clears throat> the other part of certainly collaborating is I want to be able to do rich reviewing and kind of see all the markup and stuff. So, of course, with Office, you can do that. So let me go ahead and turn on my markup. And then you can see that I have things like red lines and edits and even threaded comments. So I can have that great, rich office editing and reviewing experience, too, on the iPad. All right, so now let's go to Excel. Because you know, the uh, iPad has um, a reputation of helping you kind of look cool. But now with Excel, it can help you look smart, too. So here I have uh, my graphs. Everything looks great, of course, because it's in Excel. And if I uh, swipe over, you can see even sophisticated things like uh, my spark lines in this app, too. And thinking about how to interact in touch with even with financial and, and numerical information, we've been really thoughtful about that. So if I tap in here and I want to make an edit, um, you see my keyboard comes up. But notice this, if I go to my numbers keyboard, it's actually a custom numeric keyboard for Excel that makes it just easier to do equations and formulas. We can get another example of that nice touch we did to make that sure it's a, a nice fantastic feature. office experience. Yep. So now I want to say I want to add a zero and do that. And you'll see my chart automatically updates. It's all connected, like you'd expect with Excel. But I can also do rich visualization. So here I'm in my chart menu. I could change the styles. I could change the types. Maybe I want to go see what the pie charts look like. But one of my favorite features, and unique to Office on the iPad, is I actually get recommendations. So the app's helping me suggest what might look good. And you see, these aren't just examples. This is actually my data. This is a preview of what my chart's going to look like before I select it. So let me go ahead and just grab that pie chart. That simple, all in touch. I didn't use a mouse and keyboard for any of this, but I was able to interact with even quantitative information in Excel. And hopefully by now you see, this is definitely not the ported Windows app to an iPad. And it's certainly not the iPhone app right, running in 2x. These are uniquely built for the iPad. Fantastic Office, great touch experience. All right. Now let's go to PowerPoint. It's an important Take a distinction look because it's not Office yeah, Mobile expect, upsized. Everything looks yep. beautiful. Um, all, all my imagery is there. And it's also very easy for me to interact with it with Touch Again. Let me just go ahead and insert that picture of San Francisco that I need. And I'll do that. And again, those nice big touch handles. I can just zoom down, get it just how I want it. And even, again, because it's Office, I can do all of my picture style designs. Look at all those options, right? So I can add the shadow and make it look just right. And of course, uh, uh, PowerPoint is also about presenting. So, and we expect people to do a lot of presentations with um, PowerPoint on the iPad. And as I go in, you can see my animations look great. My beautiful transitions are there. You see everything kind of flows in. And again, really natural on a touch design. And of course, even that awesome origami transition that you need. Everyone can't live without that. But we've also done some cool things that are unique to just this app on the iPad. Things like if I touch and hold, I actually get a laser pointer. So as I'm presenting, I can really call attention to what I'm talking about. Or similarly, I can actually even go and annotate. So let me grab this yellow, and maybe I want to call attention to this or how this is rolling up. So we're going to give you some neat tools in a touch environment to really um, have a more impactful presentation. That's cool. So hopefully it's giving you a, a great example of how rich these Office for iPad apps are. But it turns out I use a lot of, app, a lot of devices in my life. And I want that great Office experience and my content available everywhere I go. And that's the promise of Office 365, that I have my great Office experience, all my devices, PC, Mac, phone, browser, and of course, iPad. So I'm now going to go over to this amazing 80 two inch perceptive pixel device, a giant tablet of sorts, and show you that same presentation I was just working on on the iPad. And of course, because it's all saved in OneDrive, I have one source of the truth. And as I go out and I open it, you'll see that picture. Yeah, we're going to show Francisco this now on a device you don't in, have because we haven't time. shipped there a big is. screen <laughs> thing for right. consumers or even for uh, smaller businesses. I think these things yeah, still cost as much as a Tesla. Yep. premium business model. So that means today, everyone on the planet with an iPad can go download these apps and use for free the ability to read and present your Office content. Now, with an Office 365 subscription, users have the ability to both create new Office content and do all the editing they'd like on their iPad app. 
So that means effective today, our Office 365 subscribers have the full capabilities of the Office for iPad apps, joining the application experience they have on their PC, Mac, phone, and browser. And as we move forward, you'll see us bring beautiful Office experience touch first onto, into the Windows Store, as well as other popular platforms. So this is really just the beginning. For what it's worth, now, she is a great a second, presenter. Uh, yeah, she's fantastic. About the IT um, that hard other popular platforms, I assume that means Android and nothing else? <laughs> what, else would, what else could that mean? <laughs> manage all of this and empower their employees Oculus, while maintaining probably. security for the business. Right. <laughs> so to show this, I'm going to walk over to my Samsung Android tablet. And for the companies who are enabling what they call a bring-your-own-device strategy, where employees can bring whatever devices they have and get work done on them, Microsoft has Intune, which is our cloud-based mobile device management solution. And what Intune does is provide a company portal for employees to log in and get access to the mobile apps and manage their devices that they need. So here I am in my um, company portal on my Android device. And you see I have all the apps that IT has provided to me and recommending that I use. But it's also where I can manage my devices. So if I go there, you see I have lots of devices I'm using to get my job done. And as a user, I can manage them in a self-service way right here. So maybe I got a new iPhone, and I want to give my old iPhone to my daughter. Well, right here, I can go in, I can open my configuration, and I can actually wipe or selectively remove just the business information, the business apps, the business content. But what stays on that iPhone are my personal pictures, my contacts. That way, I can just get all the business information off, but keep the personal aspects. Again, all in a self-service way from the company portal. So if I go back to apps here, you see this is actually a curated set of apps my IT is recommending. And this can be customized to me, so it can be unique to my job and my function. And you have lots of different kinds of applications. We have line of business apps, that, like my Contoso app that my company's built for me and provisions here. Also links to public apps in the App Store, as well as web apps as well, so it manages all different kinds. And you see Microsoft has a number of apps for Android as well, too. There's our Bing, Skype, OneNote, and let's say I want to get some work done, so I'm going to go into my Dynamics app, and that's going to take me to the public app store where I can download that. Now, uh, the benefit of installing this from the company, store, uh, the company portal is that I, as an employee, know that this is the right app. I don't have to worry about if this is the one we're supporting. Is this what my business uses? I have the confidence that this is the one my IT shop wants me to use. And also, for IT, I know my users are going to get the right app and not install the wrong one, and then, of course, call me and bother me with that information. So it's great for both sides. Now, uh, we've been working, of course, get to help people with the bring your own device approach for a little while, but now we're moving into the frontier of helping you know, IT manage when employees want to bring whatever cloud service they need to get their work done, which is increasingly the situation. And IT, of course, needs a way to manage access and identity with all these different cloud services their employees are using. And this is where Azure Active Directory comes into play, offering cloud-based identity and access management. And as many of you know, probably 90% of enterprises use Active Directory on-premises today. But now we offer that same capability in our cloud-based way with Azure. Now to show that, I'm going to go over to my PC and my browser, where I'm logged in to my Azure directory. And this is where I, as an IT or a developer, can manage all aspects of Azure. Now I'm in my Active Directory area. And what happens here when I set up a single sign-on in my Azure Active Directory, it gives me what I would equivalent to uh, your Facebook experience, right? In a personal life, I have my Facebook username and login, and I can use that to access a whole number of, of consumer services that I have. But I only have to remember that one username and password. It makes it very great, nice uh, uh, experience. Now, Azure Active Directory does that same thing in the workplace. I just have to have my one it's username and password, often hear. just those credentials, Facebook makes it a and great I can access experience. all the things I need to get done for work. <laughs> So here I am in my directory, and you can see I can do things like add users to my directory, I can create groups in my directory, and I can even do re um, see reports. And this shows me things like where people are. This is an odd little from, segue, by the way, from me, Office um, for the iPad to Windows Azure Active Directory Services. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, that's quite a leap. This gives me a view to help, again, keep my organization safe. Now, I can, of course, add applications to work uh, with my Active Directory, too. So I'll go in there, and I will um, add an application. Do that here. <clears throat> and we have in the um, gallery a number of different applications that I can add. I'll go over here. 
spinning here for a second. There we go. And uh, in the gallery, we actually have over a thousand applications that are already integrated with Azure Active Directory and folks across the industry that you may or may not expect to be working with Microsoft. And there, of course, there's ga um, uh, different categories, so I can find just what I'm looking for as well. Still now, trying to load some data there. It's pretty slow. Hopefully she won't yell at the audience like Steve Directory. Jobs did. It means employees, again, <laughs> it's probably all being used by Titanfall. <laughs> all the uh, Azure performance. <laughs> But the other aspect of it is this is also the single place that IT has to manage that as well. So when an employee leaves the organization, I just go here, I remove those credentials, and then the employee doesn't have access to any of the business information. Again, an important aspect of keeping company information safe. Now, if I go back, and I'm going to show you an application I actually have configured for a single sign-on um, already. So I go into my company applications list. In this case, I'll choose DocuSign. And I have a DocuSign set up for single sign-on. And also, um, so I, again, you, my employees can go straight in there and start using it. And this is also where I would set up things like multi-factor authentication. And that's a new added capability such that I can actually set it up and my employees will be prompted for a second factor of authentication, maybe a code that comes in through text message or a voice call. And that helps me know that the people logging in really are who they say they are. Again, another important aspect of company protection. Now, everything I talked about in, across Intune mobile device management, Azure Active Directory and the capabilities there, plus Azure Rights Management. We're bringing together today and introducing the Enterprise Mobility Suite oh, into a holistic a offering. So now IT has one place to go to manage the bring your own device strategy, help in a cloud-based way, do um, identity and access management, as well as protect company data. All right, so now let's talk about our last, but certainly not That's least, actually three places to go, but so I, I'm <laughs> curious to see how that evolves because those are not all one integrated uh, service. Yeah. We're now allowing developers to extend that to native apps on mobile devices. So I'm going to go to my iPhone to show you that experience. So here on my iPhone, I have that DocuSign native app installed. Now, what DocuSign has done is they've integrated with Azure Active Directory, but they've also integrated with Office 365. Because Office 365 is a great user experience, but it's also a rich, open, flexible development platform as well, making it possible to do great apps like this. So I'm going to go ahead and open my DocuSign app. And you see it's that, a whole new um, world for the company's uh, efforts that. in the enterprise, but and you can uh, that see, company is integrated Apple. With, maybe I will. <laughs> All right, we're going to discard that. <laughs> All right. Um, there we go. Now you can see that it, um, right in the middle there, because it's built in Office 365, I have access to all my content sitting in SharePoint or Office 365. I can get out and I can get to all of my documents sitting in my Office 365 account. In this case, I have some documents I need to sign as the DocuSign app lets me do that. So I can sign it right here on my phone and it automatically saves right back to the cloud, my Office 365 account. I can open it in my OneDrive for Business account as well. So this is just one small example of what's possible when you're building with Azure and Office 365 as a developer. So you can create these really rich mobile experiences so we can all get more done. Now, as you've just seen, Microsoft is focused on that magical intersection where mobile and cloud come together. And everything I showed you today was delivered by the cloud the Office for iPad apps and Office 365 experience, Intune mobile device management, and Azure Active Directory. And Microsoft, of course, has a holistic approach across people, IT, and developers. And we really are delivering a cloud for everyone on every device. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Knocked out of the park. So hopefully yep. you got a great feel for the comprehensiveness of what we have set out to do when it comes uh, to building a cloud uh, for mobile devices. Uh, the, the, you, know, you obviously picked up on the news of uh, Office on the iPad. Uh, it's a beautiful set of applications and you also hopefully got a feel for how we're taking great focus and great care to make sure that Office on every device shines through. Uh, but there was a lot more uh, behind the scenes um, and I want to talk a little bit about each one of those elements in some detail. When it comes to Office 365, the vision is pretty straightforward. It is to make sure that the one billion Office users and growing can have access to the high fidelity Office experience on every device they love to use. Uh, and Office on the iPad and today's announcement marks one more step in that direction. Uh, today, the fact that anyone who's an Office 365 subscriber uh, can get access to those beautiful applications on the iPad and do more 
uh, is uh, definitely the news of the day, but you can expect us, our commitment going forward is to make sure that we drive Office 365 everywhere. So that means across the web, across all phones, across all tablets, across PCs. That's our real commitment to Office 365 everywhere. Second, when it comes to developers, now, you saw that in the DocuSign demo that Julia did. The key salient point, perhaps, is that the most important developer API that we have is Office 365. Uh, if you look at how we are going about Office 365, we are building a great set of end user experiences, but all the user data, starting with Azure Active Directory, which is user information, so that you can enable developers to do single sign-on uh, with Office 365. Uh, OneDrive APIs, OneNote APIs, APIs for SharePoint information in lists, you know, information about every aspect of Office 365 that pertains to users is getting exposed in a very modern way across all devices for developers to take advantage. So developers think a lot about user state, and all that user state happens to be in the broad SaaS application relating to communications. Uh, and that's one of the things that we enable. At the last 30 seconds, that, I have no idea what he just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, size, user state, I don't know. Yeah. You have the ability to elastically grow your application using more compute resources. And something called Azure Mobile Services really enables you to build your application. So the combination of what we're doing with Office as well as Azure provide developers the richest developer surface area for them to be able to express themselves in a very rich way and go after a very wide opportunity, especially perhaps... His way with language is a little odd. He, he's talking about... Uh, you get to be able developers to expressing themselves uh, on some surface area. Yeah, really this is this is it. very uh, well. This is I'm used to this because uh, when he came out of the server and the cloud enterprise stuff, I mean, this is the way that those guys talk, and um, this is this language is this is the weirdness of this event because uh, Office for iPad is obviously very end user focused. And then this stuff is at the complete opposite end of their, you know, of their business, and it's it's very strange to see these things commingled. Yep. Uh, today, because if you think about the variety of categories that have emerged with trends like bring your own devices and identity management, so you have device management in one, as a silo today. You have identity management and access as a different silo. You have rights management and data protection. What we announce, what we are announcing today, is both offerings and a roadmap to build a comprehensive enterprise architecture for IT professionals to be able to bring together their identity management, access management, device management, and data protection into one suite and one enterprise architecture that works across all devices, uh, Android, iOS, Windows. And that's uh, a really a massive step forward uh, for anyone who's been tackling and dealing with the complexity that's inherent. Uh, and you have two sides to it. It really enables the IT professionals to be able to do their job and be heroes because they can now enable the end users inside their organization uh, to be able to have the flexibility and empowerment to use any application, any device, and at the same time ensure that the corporate assets are well protected. And that people-centric approach uh, to IT is something that we have pioneered and, and now we're bringing it together as part of the enterprise mobility suite. It's not clear what that is. Uh, yeah. Microsoft has something called Intune, which uh, lets you manage uh, you know, PCs and devices and so forth. And they've been using that people-first language with regards to Intune for, for several years now. And so I would imagine that this is an extension of, of Intune. Well, that, that entire passage about bringing everything, the single sign-on, all that stuff together mm -hmm. into one comprehensive blah 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 they've been saying that for more yep. than a decade. Yeah, and, and Intune, you know, integrates with uh, Azure Active Directory services and so forth. I mean, these, it's almost like they're just pulling together pieces that had previously been semi-separated. And the second aspect that's unique to us is how we want to bring the end user experiences that really empower everybody. Uh, but at the same time, we want to enable a rich set of developer extensions and give the control to IT to be able to govern those experiences. That coming together of 
end users, IT professionals, and developers is ingrained in pretty much everything that we do from Office 365 to Azure to our client platforms. And that's the uniqueness uh, with which we approach our innovation agenda going forward. And as I said, today is just one aspect of our overall strategy. Today I was not talking about the all-up Microsoft strategy. I was talking about the most critical uh, piece of innovation agenda, which is at the intersection of mobility and cloud. Uh, and you now will hear us build. talk more about yeah, other I still don't feel like I have a handle on enterprise mobility suite. Nope. I, I don't see it as a single thing. Nope. We'll be here talking about the innovations in Windows. Uh, because one of the questions right up front I wanted to address is, what about Windows? Where does Windows fit in with all of this? Windows is a massive agenda for us. We will innovate, and you'll see us talk next week about the great innovations in the operating system and great innovations in devices. Um, at the same time, we are absolutely committed to making our applications run what most people describe as cross-platform great. There's no holding back of anything. It is about being able to excel everywhere our customers are. Uh, one of the questions is, is this a massive trade-off for you? There is no trade-off. It's reality for us. It's not a competitive reality. That's not what motivates us. What motivates us is the realities of our customers. Uh, what motivates us is to make sure that we build the great experiences that span the digital life and digital work of our customers, both individually and as organizations. And that's what you can count on us doing, uh, both with Windows as well as other platforms. And that's what's driving us. Uh, we'll even have post-build another conference in a couple of weeks to talk about our data innovation. And I'm pretty excited about the work that we are doing in data. So the idea is that over the next even three, four to four weeks, you'll get a much better picture of our innovation agenda going forward and how all of these threads come together to define Microsoft in a mobile first, cloud first world going forward. So that's uh, what we had uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for all those who are joining mm -hmm. on the webcast and those of you who are here in person. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have had a chance to represent Team Microsoft with you and I look forward to seeing you all at Build next week. Thank you. Wow. So it was really an announcement about Office for iPad, which was highly expected, and then yes. a whole lot of blather about the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because they, they, they talked about three different things, and one of them was very well fleshed out, mm -hmm. and the other two were not. And I, I guess uh, to sort of defend the assertion that maybe they might have talked about Xamarin, maybe they might have talked about uh, the cloud-based version of Visual Studio, which is absolutely in the works, and then they didn't. Um, Microsoft is hosting its major, its only uh, developer show next week. And so, you know, if those things are going to happen uh, from an announcement standpoint, I think next week makes the most sense. But still, you know, they brought up that developer thing as part of the three issues they were going to discuss. And it really didn't get much attention. And I'm still very unclear on what that was all about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, the big, big pit push for my Office for iPad, which looked very good. Uh, and that, yes. by the way, is free with an Office 365 subscription. And it's free for, if you don't have a subscription, to view the documents and things like that. You can't create or modify documents, as far as I know, unless That's you right. have the Office 365 subscription. They breeze past Intune, the Azure Active Directory stuff, yep. the Office 365 Everywhere initiative, and really pushing uh, Office 365 as a, as a platform for developers and so on. But really, this was... This, as far as I can tell, was really an Office for iPad announcement plus with benefits, plus, if you will. Right. Yeah. I, I think the you know the enterprise mobility suite, as they're calling it, um, is probably somewhat similar to maybe early versions of Office, where they were bringing together things that are different, and then in the future, as it evolves, maybe they become more integrated. Um, because, like I said, I mean th those things are all very separate right now. And, uh, may, you know, maybe they'll have a, a single web portal, and that's the point. You can access this from any device or whatever. But um, I thought that was, you know, that and the developer part were, were not fleshed out very well. On the other hand, you know, the, the iPad stuff was amazing. I mean, I, I think they did a very credible job of uh, presenting what they're trying to do there and, and creating something that looks really good. 
It does look good and had some really nice little, uh, you know, iPad native uh, benefits like, you know, the laser pointer and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which was, you know, th it's those little things that really yeah. make an app great on the, on a, on a limited platform like the iPad. So it's good right. that they, you know, they, they've demonstrated they really get that platform. They really get the, the no keyboard tablet only uh, platform for iPad users. And so I think that's really great. Again, as we were saying earlier, this should have happened three or four years ago. That would have been just devastatingly uh, wise of them to do it. They didn't do it. They waited till now. Now here it is. And, you know, it, right. it's going to have a, a, a somewhat muted impact, but still it looks pretty good. And it's going to be a competitive uh, situation for Google and uh, others, uh, Apple also, who make uh, alternatives to Office. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But it seems to me that there was, there in addition to launching, officially launching Office for iPad, there were two other agendas. One of them was to get Satya Nadella out there as the leader of Microsoft yeah. in his first yep. coming out party. Uh, he got to be the the CEO and sort of present himself publicly in a way that you know is is, is we're going to see him probably constantly from now on, you know, addressing a big group, announcing things, speaking on behalf of the company to the public at, at large, and then the other thing I think was to um, kind of plug the build conference. I think they're trying to sort of get the sort of public attention around Office for iPad and then direct attention to the upcoming build conference. They probably have Google I/O envy where, you know, Google has this developer conference that, every, you know, people act like it's a Beatles conference, you, you know, everybody's screaming and stuff. And, you know, it, it's like, you know, it, it's a, they probably want to generate the kind of hype that both Google and Apple get around in the case of Google, their developer oh. conference, and in the case sure. of Apple, their mobile platforms. So, you know, that's the right things to want. And, uh, and Office for iPad looks like a really great thing. And I think we're going to obviously hear a lot more about the developer stuff at Build and then we can sort of pick that apart and see what, uh, you know, what is actually new and what's just sort of warmed over uh, leftovers. Right. And, and since you've put me in the awkward position of defending both Apple and Google, I guess I'll just point out that one of the things that those companies get right at their developer events is they have a lot of news on day one. And uh, when you look at I.O., when you look at WWDC, um, they are newsworthy events typically. Uh, and that's something Microsoft needs to do. And I think that was part of the point of saying, look, we know you're looking for other things. We know you're thinking about Windows. You know, it's impossible to see Office for iPad and not start generating questions about the Windows Touch version. Build is next week. You know, let's generate a little bit of excitement. So we'll see what they do. Well, Paul, it's 1045 a.m. Pacific time and, and we don't have much more time. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to plug? <laughs> well, uh, since it is 10.45 a.m., I will say that uh, <laughs> my review of uh, Office for the iPad is now available on my website, uh, winsupersite.com. Um, you know, I feel like they did a very good job of explaining what's unique about it. And you touched on a little bit of it just a moment ago. They did a really good job of uh, integrating iPad features with Office features, you know, kind of giving you that best of both worlds. I think this is... Um, uh, for the people that have been waiting for office or need office for work, I think this is going to be a big deal. Well, um, let's go ahead and wrap it up, Paul. Um, I want to thank you for stepping up. And I know you're very busy today with all this news flying around and this all the crazy. reporting and reviews and stuff that you're doing. So I want to thank you for taking the time out to uh, to to sit through this uh, live presentation. So thank no, no, you for thank that. you for having me. And, of course, you can f find Paul at the Win Super site and also on Twit's own Windows Weekly Show. So, again, thank you for that. Uh, this has been Twit's special coverage of the Microsoft announcement taking place live in San Francisco. This was Satya Nadella's first public appearance as the CEO, and they announced Office for iPad and a whole bunch of developer stuff and also plugged the coming Build Conference. My name is Mike Elgin. I thank you for joining us here today. Mm -hmm.